Uh, as you are aware, a little more than a year ago, Duquesne announced it was selling its radio station, WDUQ. Selling the station, which has grown into a professional news operation, presented the opportunity to make significant new investments in our academic programs that are aligned with Duquesne's strategic mission. At the same time, we knew uh, the future of Pittsburgh's first public radio station would be very important to the community. So we embarked upon a sale process. Uh, as we did it, it was very important to Duquesne to explore ways to preserve the public character of the station. It was essential for us to find a buyer with an established track record of independent radio station operation and solid financial strength so that WDUQ's legacy could continue. I'm pleased to inform you now that we've, re we've reached an agreement that meets all those objectives. WDUQ has served this community for more than 60 years and today's announcement ensures the public service it has provided will continue. This afternoon, the Executive Committee of Duquesne University's Board of Directors approved an agreement for the sale of WDUQ to Essential Public Media for $6 million. Essential Public Media is a joint venture of local public radio station, WYEP, and public media company, a nonprofit organization launched by uh, Public Radio Capital. Public Radio Capital is a national nonprofit organization that has been a partner in more than $250 million worth of public radio transactions. In addition to preserving the public nature of the station, EPM has committed itself to internships for Duquesne's students. We feel confident that essential public media understands the significance of what has become an important community resource and that it will work to enhance its tradition of serving Pittsburgh and the region. This agreement will allow us at Duquesne University to invest in the following new academic initiatives connected directly to our strategic plan. Establishment of a Francis Lieberman Endowed Chair in African Studies. Funding of this chair will help attract a nationally prominent director for our new African Studies program and provide support for the program's activities. Secondly, establishment of a new Claude de Plas Endowed Chair in Mission Studies. This will be a rotating chair among our faculty whose work relates directly to the university's Spiritan mission. Third, creation of a new endowment to fund stipends for graduate students in PhD programs in the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts. And finally, additional endowment money for scholarships to increase uh, diversity in our student body. So we are very pleased with this outcome and we believe that it benefits Duquesne University and the Pittsburgh region and public radio. Thank you. Marco. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dougherty. And we'd like to also thank the executive committee uh, of the board of directors of Duquesne University. And we'd like to thank you, the press, for uh, scrambling to participate in this uh, press conference on such short notice, uh, and especially those of you that actually came here physically. This is really a monumental moment uh, in what has been a very long 12-month uh, process for all of us, uh, but we are here today and we're very excited uh, and honored to be here uh, with the decision that has been made and the announcement that's being made. We think that this is indeed an excellent outcome and a great story. We think it's a great story for Duquesne University. We think it's a great story for essential public media, but mostly we think it's a great story for the listeners of DUQ Radio and really for the people of Pittsburgh and for the greater Southwestern community that we're going to be serving. 
Um, why is it a great story? Uh, number one, a decision was rendered. And a year ago, an announcement was made. We all woke up to that announcement. We all felt quite uh, anxious about the idea that uh, DUQ might be sold from the university. And we've all been at work at this, many of us, uh, many of us behind the scenes, not just here today, to make sure that it stayed in the hands of uh, public radio. Uh, with the decision that was made today, there's great uh, movement towards certainty versus all of the uncertainty that has sort of lived out there for the last year. And what our mission is really is to preserve um, NPR programming, uh, and we think that is a great win for the city. Uh, we are here also to enhance and expand local journalism, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we want to continue the fine tradition of jazz programming. Again, excited and very honored to be here today, and I'd like to now uh, introduce Susan from Public Media. Yeah, well, as the only one who is not a local uh, person from uh, Pittsburgh, let me tell you that I've worked in public radio for over 35 years, managing stations, participating in network activities at the board level, and with Mark Han, co-founded Public Radio Capital 10 years ago to do exactly what I think we're here to do today, which is to strengthen and expand local public radio services. The uh, illusion that the president made to the deals that we have done, those have been around transactions that offer new outlets, stronger programming, or bring financial resources from other places to local communities to strengthen the capacity of local public media operations. And I want to say that the partnership with YEP is one that we are very excited about. We are always looking for local public media organizations that are collaborative, have vision, see what we can do in a local community. I think Pittsburgh will be pleased with what we're able to offer for here with this station. I also want to applaud the university for making this decision. One of the early deals that we did with Public Radio Capital was with Johns Hopkins University when they decided, as Duquesne has done, to sell and put that station in the hands of a community organization. That station is very successful serving Baltimore. I know nobody wants to hear much about Baltimore in this city today, but I just have to mention that that's an institutional example of where this is a win-win for the the institution that has nurtured the station and then for the community group that takes it over. So uh, we're very excited about the opportunity and I think we're all open for questions. Um, Susan, it's been said that format is king in radio. Um, can you talk to us about what the format will be going forward? Will listeners hear morning edition, all things considered? I think Marco signaled the fact that NPR and the programs from PRI and American Public Media lo and local journalism, very important to us, as is jazz. So the kind of the framework of what's going to be on that station is uh, said here, but as far as specific format issues, we, we're, it's way too soon for us to get into a discussion of that. Boy, Marco, what, I mean, what a great question, Marco. I'll get Absolutely back to you. not. No, yeah, of course we're going to be keeping AAA and probably uh, uh, continuing to, uh, to beef it up as well. And I, I would say one of the things, too, here is the shared services between WYEP and what we can bring to it through Public Radio Capital and Public Media Company are really a highlight of this deal, as well as the chance to collaborate with others in the market. We're specifically looking at collaboration with WQED and thinking that there may be some very nice possibilities there as well. well let me follow up on that, Susan. When you say shared services, are you talking about um, combining the Cost, sort of the back office costs of running a radio station, and what, what specifically would those be? Uh, both back end, so there's a lot of administrative back end costs that uh, we certainly think that there are efficiencies on, but certainly front end as well. Um, maybe even some cross promotional programming, underwriting, some of the things that happen on the front end of the station as well. And also your, your facility. Yeah. They have, uh, WYEP has an excellent facility and we're thinking that there may be some real good ways to uh, operate these stations together in that paid for, excellent, eco-friendly 
facility. Yeah. Marco, will the studios for WDUQ remain on the Duquesne campus or will they be merged into the WYEP? Yeah, I think Susan just alluded to it. We're definitely going to co-locate um, in the WYEP Broadcast Center, the first green radio station in the nation uh, on the south side, which has uh, about five years old now, but has ex excess capacity that we had built into it five years ago when we uh, launched. So yes, they're going to be uh, located down on the south side. Mr. Cardamone, uh, currently 90.5 has about 100 hours of jazz. Are you committing to playing jazz music on that frequency? It's the first I heard jazz programming. I didn't hear music. This is the first time I have put your face to, to your voice because I wake up with you in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> that is tremendous. Um, uh, can you repeat the question? It currently has about 100 hours of jazz during the course of the week. Uh, I heard jazz programming, but I want to make be specific. It's jazz music. We're already getting comments. What's going to happen to jazz? We're already getting emails from listeners. So I just yeah. uh, want yeah, to be able well, to tell them. We're very aware of the jazz issue and have been uh, since day one. We don't really have the specifics that you're asking. We, we, it's way too soon for us to answer that question as you're asking it. We are committed to honoring the tradition of jazz and we are committed to continuing the tradition and we understand the legacy that that represents in Pittsburgh and specifically for DUQ. Follow up if I may, wouldn't it be a smart move since jazz itself has more listeners than either of the music formats of the other public radio stations to keep something that is successful? I think you bring up a great point and what we intend to do is listen to the community and the listeners very definitely um, and, and establish listening posts both electronic and in the, in the community at large to make sure we're aware of what their uh, perspective of this is as well. The other thing too is I think it's these three pieces to this station that we're really <coughs> paying attention. Local news and how important that is, the national news that comes from the three major networks in the country, NPR, APR, APMG and uh, PRI, and also the jazz programming. So I think if we can really focus on those three strands are very important to us going forward. The specifics, it's too early for us to get to that. Consummation date? When will this? It's a very long process. We think uh, with the FCC approval and all of the things that have to happen, uh, it's probably six months is our best estimate at this point. Um, June sometimes, at some point. And, and I'm not real clear on the structure of how this will work since it was an entity of YEP that bought this. Does, how, just how does the two stations well, well the, new, the new entity, Essential Public Media, is a joint venture between WYEP and Public Media Company. That entity will, in, in essence, be the, uh, the holder of the license of what is now DUQ. There will then be co-location, cross-synergies in terms of operational things uh, at the uh, YEP Broadcast Community Center. Let me just jump in to explain public media company. A uh, public radio company, public radio capital has been a catalytic organization that we spoke about for 10 years. Natural outgrowth of our work is to say that there is a role to play to be involved after the deals that we've done for these past 10 years. So we are launching public media company and I'm happy to say Pittsburgh is the first project to provide this ongoing participation that we will have with YEP. We think it's a good use of our track record and our experience to stay involved with the local operator to bring capacity and ideas and some of our relationships and our financial track record to the local scene. Susan, does public media company have a website getting Yes. Okay. Is it, what is it, is it public media? Public media company. Okay. Yeah. Is the six million dollar uh, sale price, is that all cash up front or how is that uh, being structured? Uh, I can tell you that it is uh, mostly cash. Uh, there are other considerations besides cash, but uh, like uh, what? I, I don't want to go into them at this point. Why is this deal better than the slightly higher from we did have a slightly higher offer from another uh, bidder, uh, but um, we uh, had to assess not only uh, the bid price, but also the ability to, um, to fund it. 
uh, and we thought that the track record that we have here of independent operation by YEP plus the national strength they bring to uh, the table with uh, the, uh, their partner here from uh, public media uh, made them a, a much more uh, a, a stronger bid and more reliable not only for the immediate but for the long term. What will the new colleagues be? We don't know. We don't know, but they will not be. They will not be WDUQ. Susan, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Public Radio Capital was initially involved with Pittsburgh Public Media. Right. What happened? We ended that contract uh, July 3rd, and we were out of the scene here. And then YEP reached out to us later, and we started talking about what we could do together. Marco, Can you um, talk about why WYEP decided to get involved? What was the impetus for WYEP? Uh, yeah, we <clears throat> just came off of a, a five-year uh, long-term strategic planning session uh, in the last year before the announcement was made, and we're really looking at our growth opportunities in the Pittsburgh market. Um, we are and have been a very financially strong station with a strong and very engaged board for the last 10 years operating surplus, uh, small, lean, mean kind of uh, uh, radio station, and we were looking for, for growth opportunities. We had no idea ever that uh, this opportunity would present itself, and when it first presented itself, we did not envision doing anything other than trying to support the situation uh, as it existed at that time to make sure that as it spun out from the university, it stayed as an independent public media uh, radio station. As it turned out over the last twists and turns of the last year, um, many things have happened, lots of conversations with lots of people, and we just sort of found ourselves uh, in a position to make sure that that happened, and that's where we are today. You had a question? Um, yeah. Will every Duquesne student who currently works with DWU be offered an internship, or will some be left? Yeah. Great question. I'm going to let mm -hmm. Dr. Doherty <laughs> take that. Well, that's, that's a detail to be worked out. Um, we expect that uh, by the time that is worked out, there will actually be more uh, Duquesne students involved in working with the new entity, uh, given support for uh, the internships that we've pledged to one another. May I, may I follow up on that? Internships or paid jobs like they have right now? Uh, right now, there's a file. It, it fluctuates uh, right now between, let's say, 15 to 20. Yeah. Uh, are there going to be paid student jobs, or is it in unpaid internships? We envision both. Uh, but uh, we have uh, pledged to each other uh, money uh, to support it, so some of them will certainly be paid. What will happen with the current management team and staff of WDUQ? Well, we've, uh, uh, we've informed them, of course, of, of this decision, uh, and uh, we are, uh, of course, counting on their uh, history of professionalism to see us through uh, the transition and we will keep them informed at every step uh, and support them uh, as we can but of course when the deal is consummated uh, they'll no longer be employees of the university the, the other bid that you had was it from a, a religious broadcaster or another public broadcaster uh, the other bid we had was from another uh, NPR station Uh, I can. They've self-identified as PPM. Oh, okay. And, and then, Susan, in the past, you guys have, have always helped um, broadcasters buy your higher sell stations. Is this, this seems like kind of a change for you, sort of into the operational mode. Is this a, a change for PRC? Is it? Well, are you guys going to be doing more um, operational stuff in the future? That's what I was trying to explain uh, before about the differentiation between public radio capital and public media company. Public radio capital will continue to operate as we have for the last 10 years as catalytic, uh, b representing clients in acquisitions, financing, consulting to help station strengthen services. Public media company as a New non our new nonprofit that we are launching here is independent and will participate in these kinds of operational uh, circumstance going forward because we think there's some efficiencies and synergism and a lot of good things that hap can happen around the capacity that we through public media company can bring to local operations such as we're going to develop here in Pittsburgh with YEP. Does that answer your question? I mean, I, I guess I'm not getting why. I mean, it's kind of a shift for you guys. I mean, you're sort of the 
you know, the bankers before, and now you're the operators. So it seems like, you know, it was maybe the mission not getting done the way no. you wanted it in the past. Or? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a shift. I would say it's an addition. It's an additional role because we uh, there is so much to do on the side that Public Radio Capital has continues to uh, work through and that mission. But we see more changes underway. For example, these institutional institutional flux in the marketplace and when uh, an institution like Duquesne decides that this is what they need to do joining with YEP to make this happen together it is an additive in our minds not a, not a shift PRC doing what it's done PMC adding this new role Uh, in that case, we are not. We have nothing to do with the operations. We're the owner, and in that case, it was to salvage that station, and we're going to continue to do that. There was nobody who could buy that station at the time that we did. Uh, again, this is a little bit different, and I think it will become clear as we go through and develop this project, uh, where th under public media company, we're working to use some of the capacity experience that we have to actually help bolster the operation locally. It, it is different than what we do at, at XOT, yes. In the, the, the fights going on in Washington about public media funding, does that change at all, kind of where you are sitting in to all this, or? What, what do you mean, public radio capital or public media I mean, coming? Obviously, there's, you know, there's a lot of talk in Washington about cutting funding to, to public media. Um, and uh, you know, one of the missions I think with PRC right was to uh, to help preserve public broadcasting. Right. So does that does that make what you guys are doing um, you know more important? Does it put more more pressure on you to do this kind of stuff? We always feel pressure <laughs> at our place <laughs> to do more than we're doing. But uh, I would say the federal funding situation is of course a concern, and we want to enlarge our capacity as much as we can to help in these situations. I would say that it, particularly here too, in the local situation, it's all about local funding, and we haven't referenced that here, but we're very hopeful that local foundations and individuals in Pittsburgh will share our vision for this as we go forward. But I, I would say that the federal um, discussion is is disconcerting I think for all of us because we need every penny we can get together to make public media be what we really think it can be aspirationally in terms of serving many more listeners really well. Can you elaborate a little bit about how this joint venture is structured? For example, does YEP and um, PRC have an equal share in this that's one question that I have. And the other one is, when, when they say it's a cash deal, $6 million cash, do we interpret that? Do you, you have $6 million to pay at closing, or are you taking out a loan for, for that money? First of all, the joint venture is between WYEP and um, uh, Public Media Company, and that's just structured uh, between us. And secondly, on the, we have, I think everybody, or some people know that Public Radio Capital has developed financing sources throughout the country to bring to acquisitions and that's what's helped us be able to do these deals throughout the country so it's, a, it's we will use that track record in this case along with other contributions to uh, meet the financial demands of the sale will there be foundation funding in that or do you have local foundations helping you to make this purchase or could you elaborate about well, what mix of debt is going to be incurred by this new licensing and what is going to be uh, we can't really elaborate on the mix because we don't <coughs> at this time know the mix, but as to the foundation question, uh, indeed the foundations have been on the scene from day one when this uh, was announced yeah. by the university. They're very, it's very higher in their radar. Uh, there have been uh, long-term ongoing conversations and there continue to be, and as Susan said earlier, uh, we're very hopeful uh, that they will um, rally uh, to, to some of the uh, vision that we've put out here. Talks with national funders. Yeah. yeah, we're we're you know it's still it's very new, but we're out there looking at what an opportunity Pittsburgh is, and uh, some national funders know about what we're trying to do here. Absolutely.
thing we might say, I mean, you know, if we've exhausted ourselves at, at, on questions at any point here, we, we've got a lot to do in the next six months, but we're going to be available to you as things unfold. We can't do anything tomorrow or there's not much more to say in, in certain ways, but just know that we're very conscious, it's kind of where Marco started, how much the audience means to us and the press in terms of sharing information with that audience. We, we'll, we'll be back in touch for sure, and I know you will keep up with us as well. Um, I'd like to ask one other question. Um, when would the public comment period start and when would it end? I think it's in three months. <clears throat> in, in a, probably in about a three month period. We're not really but sure of that it, process. Is that, is that typically before the deal closes in June? Uh, I think there's a window there. Yeah. Okay, so the public comment period, it would be reasonable to say, might start sometime in April? Mid April, yeah. yeah. Okay. It would be a reasonable target. Okay, and then it would conclude before the deal is actually consummated in June. Yeah. Okay. What do you say to the DEQ members who are? financing the station and our, you know, have an ongoing financial relationship. What do you say to them from this day forward? Uh, thank them, first of all, for rallying over the last year as they have, and I think that thank you has to also go out to the uh, DUQ staff and leadership team. They've done a, an outstanding job through a very uncertain period, uh, and they've done a, a phenomenal job, and we're, you know, we're listeners too. We wake up uh, listening to all of these folks and to what they do every day and we're very appreciative and to, to maybe step out a little bit on the edge. We, we want to certainly nod to the team. We think there's a lot of talent on the team. The listeners are critical, ongoing beyond the financing as we get down the road. Um, you know, we need to build a sustainable radio station and uh, the listeners are the way that we do that. And so we need to provide to them relevant programming. We need to engage them in civic conversations that are important to them. There's a lot of great stories in Pittsburgh. We want to join your ranks as local journalists and start to tell some of the great stories about Pittsburgh. We'd like to get some of those stories up into the national uh, public radio marketplace as well. Uh, so the listeners are going to be critical to the success of this, but we have to be able to give to them uh, what they're demanding. Uh, just picking up on that, I'm sorry. No, I'm just going to say one, one quick thing. I, w I was just thinking as you were talking, my, my hope would be five years from, maybe one year from now, five years, ten years, that those members and listeners to DUQ now would feel, you know what, this was good for us, this made sense, and I've, I've got, with this station, what I grew to expect when it was under different ownership. Um, Mr. Cardamone, you mentioned the listeners being essential, being key. Do you anticipate seeking additional funding from the listening community of Pittsburgh to complete the purchase of the license? Uh, I, I do not envision that. I think what we envision is a capital campaign at some point in time for ongoing operations. I mean, the sustainability of the station will be based on the listener involvement as it is for all public media. Uh, and when would you anticipate that capital? Gosh, it's a little early for that. And we got we got our right. heads down on a lot of work. But uh, right. we just we how much would it take? What's the size of the campaign? We don't know. I mean, we don't really have uh, our head around those kind of numbers yet, or uh, what it would take. I will say that on, in, in preparing to deal, negotiate with the university to look at this, we've done very careful business planning around this to see that this is a sustainable, affordable, and I think that the reference was that we've got a track record in this. We're going to make this happen, and we're going to get the money to do it and, and make it a, a viable long-term operation. So that I understand, typically <coughs> fundraisers on air, off air, whatever, take care of normal operating costs. So what would the capital campaign do other than pay off loans? What, is that what a capital campaign would go for? Or would it go to day-to-day -day operations, which normally fund drives, et cetera, uh, yeah. take care of? Yes. <laughs> Both, I think, uh, is the early answer. I'm going to ask Dr. Dorn a question. Um, I think early in this process, the university looked uh, at a considered that the value of this license was higher, perhaps mm -hmm. 10 to $12 million. So um, can you explain to us the, ch the philosophical change that you and the board went through with respect to the price, and do you feel that this is a, a fair price for the mm -hmm. license? And if you do feel that way, why do you feel that way? Sure. Let me just say it's not a philosophical issue. Uh, it's a market issue. 
Uh, we started, as anyone selling an asset starts, uh, with the highest uh, reasonable asking price uh, that we thought the market might bear. Uh, it turned out after a year of conversation with potential bidders uh, that uh, the $6 million number is the, uh, the fair price, the reasonable price. We're happy with it. Obviously, our, our, uh, our buyer partners are happy with it. Uh, our board approved it. Uh, and so we think that uh, uh, we, we started on the high side, but we met, where, uh, we met where the market is today for a radio station such as we were selling. Well, uh, we anticipate that the, uh, the entire deal is concluded in six months, uh, and so um, uh, some of the money will be going into the university's endowment uh, immediately after that. Uh, and as the proceeds from the endowments uh, begin to hit uh, our annual budgets, then those, uh, those um, uh, uh, proceeds to the university will begin right away. Uh, I can tell you one, one immediate thing is we're, we're right now advertising for a director for our African Studies program. Uh, on Monday, I'll ask the dean of our uh, college to change that to an endowed chair uh, uh, in uh, African Studies to direct our program. So we'll immediately elevate the national stature because we know we have the money uh, to pay for somebody uh, at, at that level of achievement. So all of these things will come in uh, online uh, in their own time. One of the points that you cited in um, discussing the need to sell the station was the burden that it imposed on the student body. Um, what do the student's body get from the $6 million that you'll be getting? Well, all of the things I mentioned are academic improvements. Uh, the uh, uh, academic, the uh, African uh, Studies pr program is, is a brand new initiative following from our strategic plan. Uh, so is the chair in, uh, in mission studies. Uh, both of those will uh, go to faculty members, obviously, but we pride ourselves on our faculty's interaction and support of our students. Uh, the other two are directly for students, uh, stipends for our graduate students, and uh, scholarships for students who improve the diversity of the university. So uh, this is for us um, an exciting moment because uh, it gives us new uh, money to invest in academic initiatives which are directly connected to our uh, board approved and community approved, university community approved strategic plan. And how will this um, acquisition, will it change uh, YEP in any way? What does it do to the nature, if anything, of YEP as we know it? Hard to say. It's uh, too soon, but we're really looking forward to it. We think it's going to uh, enhance, uh, I think there are great uh, cultural opportunities organizationally. Uh, to exploit, uh, and we look forward to sort of utilizing best of breed practices throughout the whole national network, uh, bringing those in locally. So, you know, we, we think it's going to be a tremendous, I think there's lots to learn uh, from, from one another, from the new Essential Public Media team and from the YEP team, and there will be uh, certain shared services that will make that happen. Will there be more news on YEP? I don't think so. Are they going to be operated as two entirely different stations, or is there going to be a line carryover in terms of fundraising and fundraising for two stations? Or are you it kind of gets to some of the questions that were asked earlier. We definitely see sort of back-end synergies on the administrative side, but certainly front-end uh, underwriting uh, opportunities as well, uh, where there's not uh, as much duplication, but there's unified kind of approach to the marketplace, uh, and possibly for programming as well. I think there's uh, lots of synergies to explore all over the place, really. So would the call letters WYEP go away and then there's... No, no, YEP will continue. There, there are no. three public media radio stations in Pittsburgh. There's WQED, <laughs> right. there is going to be, continue to be WYEP, and then whatever our new call letters are okay. that is the existing DUQ. And three is good. Three strong public radio stations in a market the size of Pittsburgh is an excellent thing. 
lots of talk early on that maybe this could just go away and we'd have two. That's, we're very pleased that that didn't happen.